Hello. In this module, we will explore the anterior aspect of the elbow. Let's start with anatomy. The elbow is a complex joint that is made up of three joints sharing the same capsule. The humeral ulnar joint has one degree of freedom. It is a hinge joint. The humeral radial joint has two degrees of freedom. It is a condylar joint. The proximal radia ulnar joint has one degree of freedom. It is an inverse pivot joint. Two muscle bellies occupy the anterior compartment of the arm. The biceps brachii muscle superficially and the brachialis muscle deeper to it. These two muscles are innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve which runs between these two structures. The brachialis muscle is a flexor muscle that inserts distally on the coronoid process. The distal enthesis of the biceps brachii has two distinct features. The first is an aponeurotic expansion on the medial side that starts at the musculotendinous junction and covers the median nerve and the humeral artery, terminating on the antibrachial fascia. The second is that the biceps bachia has a double tendon distally, since this muscle has two heads, a medial bundle arising from the short head and the lateral bundle arising from the long head. The two bundles insert on the radial tuberosity. Two other notable anatomical structures on the anterior aspect of the elbow must be mentioned. The median nerve, it runs along the medial side of the elbow against the brachial artery in front of the brachialis. Then, at the level of the joint line, it passes under the lassitus fibrosus, medial to the artery and the distal tendon of the biceps brachii. In the upper portion of the arm, it runs between the two bundles of the pronator teres, then passes under the arcade of the flexor digitorum superficialis. The other structure is the radial nerve. It pierces through the lateral intermuscular septum, then makes its way in the anterior compartment between the brachialis deeply and the brachioradialis superficially. The radial nerve divides into two branches a lateral motor branch that runs between the two bundles of the supinator muscle after having passed under the arcade of froze to join the posterior compartment where it is called the posterior interosseous nerve and a medical sensory branch that will stay in the anterior compartment of the arm and runs along the radial artery under the brachioradialis muscle. To analyze the anterior aspect of the elbow, I suggest that you successively analyze the humeral radial and humeral ulnar joints, the distal insertion of the biceps brachii tendons, and then the median and radial nerves. We will start by the humeral radial and humeral ulnar joints. To do this, place the probe in the transverse plane at the level of the humeral trochlea. Laterally, you can see the convex shape of the capitellum and medially the margins of the humeral trochlea. Still on the lateral side, place the probe in the sagittal plane to view the capitellum superficially and the radial head distally with its rectangular surface. In the axial plane, we contract the movements of the radial head located under the annular ligament. Next, we shift the probe medially. In the sagittal plane, we can see the joint between the humerus and ulna, located right below the brachialis muscle, which we can follow to its distal enthesis on the lower portion of the coronoid process of the ulna. To complete this analysis, 
slide the probe upwards to locate, immediately above the trochlea, two fatty pads on the ulnar and radial aspects. Below these you will find the anterior articular recesses. By analyzing these specifically, you may be able to see a small amount of effusion in some cases. The anterior compartment of the arm is occupied by two muscle bellies. Superficially, there is a belly of the biceps brachii muscle, and deep to it, plastered against the humeral shaft, the brachialis muscle. Between these two muscle heads, we can follow the musculocutaneous nerve up to the surface, where it is located lateral to the tendon of the biceps brachii immediately under the cephalic vein. From this point, it is called the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm and has a purely sensory role. To analyze the distal tendon of the biceps brachii, I suggest starting with an axial section of the musculotendinous junction. At the musculotendinous junction, we can identify a thin aponeurotic expansion that starts on the medial edge of this musculotendinous junction. The lassitus fibrosis that will cover the neurovascular bundle of the median nerve and the brachial artery to terminate on the antibrachial fascia. Staying with the axial section, Proximally, we can use small movements to play with the anistropy to see the two portions of the biceps tendon. The short head of biceps is located on the medial side, and the long head of biceps is located on the lateral side. If we then slide the probe down, we can see that these two tendons have switched positions. The short head of biceps is now superficial, and the long head is deeper. By asking the patient to do pronation supination movements, we can see that the two tendons pull away during supination and come closer to the neurovascular bundle in pronation. If any of these tendons are ruptured, these movements will disappear. We can continue our analysis until we reach the distal insertion of the radial tuberosity, where the larger and more distal fibers of the short head of biceps insert. More distally, we reposition the probe on the middle third of the tendon, then rotate it 90 degrees. This aligns the probe with the long axis of the tendon until we reach its distal insertion of the radial tuberosity, where we can see the fibers of the long head deeply and those of the short head superficially, which insert more distally. During the analysis of the anterior aspect of the elbow, we will also analyze the median nerve. In the middle third of the arm, the median nerve here follows the humeral artery between the biceps brachii muscle superficially and the brachialis muscle deeply. At the musculotendinous junction of the biceps brachii, the median nerve will be covered by a thin aponeurotic expansion, the lassitus fibrosus. It will then continue its path distally, where it is first covered by the humeral bundle of the pronator teres. Here you can still see the brachialis muscle in the deep layer, then passes between the two bundles of the pronator teres, the humeral bundle superficially and the ulnar bundle deeply and finally passes under the arcade of the flexor digitorium superficialis. The last step consists of analysing the radial nerve. After piercing through the lateral intermuscular septum, the radial nerve sits in the anterior compartment of the arm, where it initially runs between the brachialis muscle deeply and the brachioradialis muscle superficially. It quickly divides into two branches, a lateral motor branch and a medial sensory branch. We will start by following the lateral motor branch. 
This lateral motor branch will position itself between the two bundles of the supinator muscle. Here you have the superficial bundle and here the deep bundle. Having the patient do pronation supination movements makes it easier to analyze this branch because there is less compression between the two bundles during pronation. At this level we can shift to a sagittal section and see the radial nerve penetrate between the two bundles of the supinator under the arcade of froze. If we now focus on the medial sensory branch, this medial branch runs in the anterior compartment of the arm. It joins the radial artery, which you can see here, and is located under the brachioradialis muscle. This first example is a complete tear. You can see the thickened, hyperechoic, degenerated tendon with an empty sheath up to the distal enthesis. I will shift backwards to show you how much the medial portion of the lassitus fibrosis has thickened. In the sagittal plane, we can measure the tendon's retraction from the distal stump to the radial tuberosity. Here is another example of the sagittal plane. We can see that the fibres remain partially attached, especially the superficial fibres of the short head on the radial tuberosity, while the fibres of the long tendon in the deep portion appear to be completely detached and disorganised with the hypoechoic effusion on the deep side. Thanks for listening. Now it's your turn. Thank you.